Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. In this video, we are taking a closer look onto the Red Komodo and if the camera is really worth the hype. Coming up. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Paul, I'm a German filmmaker and this channel is all about filmmaking, gear reviews but also DaVinci Resolve tutorials. So if that's something that you're interested in, consider subscribe, I would really appreciate that. By the way, before we're gonna start, I already have a lot of uh, Red Komodo content on this channel. So for example, I compared it with the Blackmagic Pocket, I compared it with the C70, I've also tested the Canon Speed Booster on this camera. So if you're interested in this kind of things, just check the channel out. I hope you will like it. So in this video, we are talking about the Red Komodo. I own this camera since November. I've also used it on a couple of shoots right now. And yeah, I wanted to take the time to really feel confident about what I'm saying, not just throwing out uh, any review. So let's start by the build quality and as you can see the Komodo is really really small form, form factor and it's a little metal cube as you can see and I really like the build quality is, is feels really rock solid. Um, I also like that we have this top screen here um, it's not the biggest but for menu navigation it's quite helpful and also if you are in a pinch um, it is okay for, for filming with that. I also used it for, for <laughs> recording one time. It was not ideal, but I think it's great to have it on here. Then on the back end, we have SDI connection, which I really like. We have um, an import or a yeah, connection for uh, controlling the camera. And we have for DCI Limo pin or whatever it's called. Then on the side, we have here um, the CFAST door. And we have a uh, two little audio connection, just a 3.5 millimeter jack. On the other side, we have uh, the on off switch and also the, the physical rack button. I personally don't like the position. Um, I always find, found myself um, tapping on record onto the screen or onto the outrigger handle, which I've ordered as well. So now let's talk quickly about the mount. The Red Komodo is the first third party camera, so to say, which uses the new Canon RF mount. And I found it really clever that Red uh, went this way, because that way, due to the short flange distance, you can um, actually adapt nearly any lens to this camera, whether it's, it's EF, PL or whatsoever. Um, and also in conjunction with the Canon Speed Booster, which I've already reviewed, um, it works great and it gives you gives the camera the full frame look. And yeah, I really like what Red did here with the RF mount and I really re think um, RF is the future. So uh, I think it's also future proof that we can use it here. So the Red Komodo has a 6K Super 35 global shutter sensor. Um, Super 35 means it has like a 1.3x crop to full frame. It's not um, the worst crop. For example, the Blackmagic has a almost 1.6-ish crop. So it's a little bit wider than normal Super 35. And global shutter basically means that, for example, in most other cameras, you have a rolling shutter. And that means the camera uh, reads the image sensor line by line. And it can happen basically when you're panning fast from left to right and straight objects that are in the frame will appear like banded because uh, the camera is not fast enough. And that can basically never happen on a global shutter because the global shutter um, reads the entire frame at once. So and therefore the camera is really good for like say sports action and actually it was designed as a crash cam. So um, yeah. I think it's 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 great. The global shutter looks really nice, and I feel I really like what Red did here. So now let's talk about the menu, and I think Blackmagic has the best menu overall. But uh, the Red Komodo comes really close to that. I think the user experience here is really nice. You can use the touchscreen. You can also use the buttons here. Um, it's really intuitive. The menu. It's not too big, and you find everything you need to, and everything is really easy accessible. Although I think Blackmagic is a little bit more, a little bit better, but still I really like what Red did here. And I also really love the 
you have the app that red has like red control which allows you to basically live or to basically monitor what you're shooting so you can directly see what you're shooting because the camera has a wi-fi antenna here on the side which transmits the image to your phone and that works really great and you can also control the autofocus um, on the screen which is really nice so um, yeah let's talk a little bit about the touch screen so it's not as you're using a smartphone it's not as fast or fluid it is good but it's not like a smartphone so that's, so that yet, <laughs> that's the only thing that you have to keep in mind and personally when you switch to uh, viewing the clip or to playback mode it can take a little while uh, when you want to go into the menu where you see all your clips over each other but that's the only downside that i found other than that the the app and the menu is really great so and i've already talked a little bit about autofocus and i was really curious when red announced the camera that it will has an autofocus and the camera features a face, de face detect autofocus so it's not contrast based and contrast based it's like basically not working and as far as i'm aware of also the canon dual pixel autofocus and also the sony autofocus system are face detect autofocus systems and yeah i didn't expect too much to be honest to you but i was really surprised when i saw the autofocus performance i think it really works great it also uh, wrecks focus really smoothly and it's really reliable in most situations so for example i used it on a gimbal or on a glide cam uh, 35 millimeter lens at f 2.0 and uh, the autofocus worked great and i also used it a bunch in talking head sequences so you can also use it for interviews um, where the interview is tending to move a lot um, it will do a perfect job for that but that also depends on the lens that you're using so for example i've used it with all my canon ef glass um, and that worked really great canon 16 to 35 70 to 200 whatsoever uh, worked really flawlessly it also worked perfect with my sigma lenses which i also have two sigma 50 millimeter prime lens and 35 millimeter so that was really surprising to me that also a third party lens works great however with my tamron 24 to 70 ef g2 it doesn't work so well so the autofocus is hunting a lot and also i've tested it once with a native rf lens from canon and that also didn't work too well granted uh, i've tested it when uh, red just announced a couple months ago or a month ago um, the new firmware that the camera supports rf and they are promising to improve the autofocus each iteration basically and i think yeah for what it is it is great but it is not a tracking autofocus system so it's not like canon that it automatically detects your face and retract it no you have like a little box that you can move around and the camera will basically focus on that and also for low light it's not working too well at the moment but i think what we can see already is promising and i really hope or really believe that red will improve on that let's talk about the most important thing i think that is the image quality and the image quality of the red komodo speaks for itself uh, the image quality is really great it looks really filmic um, you have lots and lots of detail and also the dynamic range of the camera is exceptional I don't know if the camera really has 16 stops and I don't have any way to do that but what I can tell you is real world usage and I've used it in various different different or difficult scenarios where there was a lot of dynamic range in the scene or shooting against this, um, the window and my subject was wearing a black suit and I was really surprised how much detail the camera was able to capture in that range and that was something that I was not used to when using for example the Blackmagic Pocket 6k so I can honestly say the red Komodo has a really high dynamic range and also has a really soft roll off so that means also the transition from the overexposed area for example when you have the sun in the shot to the normal sky the gradient there looks really nice and organic so i really like the image that comes out of the camera and also the colors look really amazing and also when you just throw on the the lat medium contrast from red with 
soft highlight roll off it looks amazing or you can basically change the camera uh, when sh when shooting in red raw so workflow with this camera is just really amazing and the image quality really speaks for itself however the camera is not the slow motion camera or a high frame rate camera so if you're not familiar with red but what red always does if you want to shoot in a different um, resolution then for example this is a 6k sensor but if you say yeah for me 4k is enough the camera will crop in to this specific area of the sensor that has a 4k resolution and also when you're shooting in 2k the same and also the same applies when you go for example, in the normal sensor or full sensor reader, the camera is able to um, give you maximum 40 frames per second. So if you want to do 50 or 60, you have to crop into the sensor to, for example, 4K 60 it does, 2K 120. And I was thinking, okay, maybe in Red Rod it's true, but maybe in ProRes it's different. Kind of, yes. So for example, if you want only to, if you only need full HD, in 24p the camera will downsample it for you from the 6k sensor to full hd and also to 4k if you want to but here same story if you want to do a higher frame rate than 40 fps then you also need to crop into the sensor so also in prores you only be able to shoot 2k 120 in that i think it's a 4x crop so um yeah that's really annoying and also red recommends you whenever you change the frame rate that you should do um, yeah like a sensor calibration which takes a lot of time and normally you don't have too much time so therefore I think the camera is not the best and I've also found that the 2k 2.8k 120 of the Blackmagic Pocket looks better for me um, I found the 40 fps that you get in a full sensor readout are enough for a normal b-roll situation so it looks kind of dreamy and smooth and uh, all that but yeah if you really want to have a high frame rate camera then probably the red komodo is not the best in that case and also now let's talk about a little bit about low light so uh, red's cameras are known for, known for that they are not great in low light except for the gemini and i was really surprised that the red komodo i think you can use it up to 3200 um, above that I wouldn't really recommend using it and also 30 to 100 you might do some noise reduction um, but also uh, on 1600 the camera looks fairly clean to me I think so it's not the best camera for low light it's not a low light monster but it's a red cinema camera and th these cameras want to have as much light as possible so I think for that what it is it's kind of okay now let's come to the post-production workflow so as I've said the camera records in red code raw so high quality medium quality and low quality I found low quality is for most of the situations that I shoot enough and also the camera shoots internally in ProRes, however in ProRes you don't get the full 6K resolution, only up to 4K, but for me that's totally fine. And yeah, these codecs are really great to edit on and I found that there's no uh, visible difference in dynamic range, uh, either if you're shooting in retro or if you're shooting in, in ProRes. So if you expose properly, um, also the pros uh, has a lot of detail in there however you have truly more color information and you are also able to change the ISO with red raw and you have 16 bit uh, opposed to 10 bit before we come to the conclusion let's come uh, let's talk about a little bit about the battery life so battery life it's really great and you can hot swap these batteries so meaning the camera will run on one battery so if the first one is empty you just throw it out and pull another one in and with one of these 955 batteries the camera gives you around one hour to one and a half hour more like one hour to one hour and ten minutes so with both batteries you get about like two and a half hours which is pretty okay i personally have seven batteries already now and i also also have a bunch of the 975 which are a little bit bigger so i think you will need a lot of batteries and these batteries are expensive and uh, they're out of stock basically everywhere so therefore i also had to use the camera first when i got it uh, with not non-approved um, batteries but i highly recommend you to use like um, the canon ones so now let's come to the conclusion 
who's this camera for what does it cost and what are the real costs that you have to look on so uh, body only we are looking at around like five thousand dollars i live in germany so i'm not sure about the dollar price but uh, we'll link it down here and also like the accessories that you need are yeah expensive so you know you need like some batteries you need some c first card and you also want to have like a little bit like a rig i have these uh, tiny tinny ribs here from gdu um, i have this red outrigger handle which is by the way really breeze to use i really like how it's uh, in the hand and yeah overall i think you look around 10k because also you want to have you want to attach a monitor and all things like that so that one you have to keep in mind um, as I've already said, the camera is not the fastest, so it makes it a little bit cumbersome uh, when you want it to use in a run and gun situation. I think you can get around with it, but um, it's it's kind of cumbersome because of the boot up time and also black shading and all that kind of stuff. Um, the camera is really rugged and robust and I've also used it in minus 5 degrees in the snow and was shooting there for several hours and had no issues at all. I was also shooting uh, 10 hours straight uh, without turning the camera off um, in the studio and the camera was not overheating, no problem whatsoever. It always worked really um, reliable with me. One thing that I don't really like is that the camera doesn't capture audio when you change the frame rate. So for example, my project frame base is always like 24p. And then when I want to shoot normal B-roll, I switch to 40p, the camera doesn't record audio, which I found really annoying. Most of the other camera do that. I, I know I don't want to use that audio, but it's nice to have as a backup scratch audio for syncing or whatsoever. So um, that's really a bummer for me. But other than that, I, I didn't find any really disadvantage here. Um, yeah, I think the camera is great for what it is. Um, it's a really great versatile camera. It's not the camera that I personally would use if you're only shooting like events and all that stuff. But if you're shooting like commercials, shooting for agencies, shooting for uh, normal corporate work as I do, this camera will convince you each time you're using it. So yeah, if you have any further questions, just drop them down in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and, and yeah, I hope to see you in my very next video. Cheers guys!